Chairperson, Chief Executive, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a privilege for me and an honor to participate in this debate on gender and the several aspects related to it. And I must say that this conference on gender comes at an opportune moment. And I thank you for the invitation extended to me to participate in this conference. We know that many countries have now come to see most of the economic, societal, and cultural issues through a gender lens to the extent that this has allowed new policies to be conceptualized and implemented. Such a change in mindset is certainly praiseworthy. However, the process of promoting gender, gender streaming, has a number of implications in terms of the operational practicality involved. Also, there is yet to reach a full understanding of the intrinsic linkage between women's empowerment, women's development, gender equality, and sustainable development. In many ways, Mauritius, despite the waves of transformation sweeping its shores, has until now been a relatively conservative society, but things are evolving. While we do not have a boys versus girls or girls versus boys conflictual approach to education, there is noticeably the phenomenon well known to many of the middle income countries of the underperformance or underachievement of boys as compared to the achievement level reached by girls. But as we shall see in the course of my presentation, the educational gains for women, these educational gains are not immediately translated into accrued benefits at the workplace, especially in the private sector. However, before I proceed with my presentation of the Mauritian case study, just a word to indicate that the focus will not be exclusively on the secondary uh, subsector, but more general through an overview of the gender situation in the formal education and training sector as a whole. If uh, we start by going on to the country profile, just to give a brief idea, uh, situated at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa, Mauritius is a small island state with a multiracial, multilingual, multicultural population of a size of approximately 1.3 million, as you can see, with an annual growth rate of 0.1%, infant mortality 12.7, birth rate 10.6, and death rate 7.7. .7. The life expectancy in Mauritius for the total population is 7.1 years, whereas for male, it's 71.7, sorry, and for the female, 78.8 years. You will note that uh, the age structure has a peak in the bracket of 25 to 54 years, and therefore we are facing a situation of aging population. If we go rapidly on the country profile, you have the economic data and the human development index. Mauritius is one of the African countries that is doing pretty well. It has a high GDP per capita. And the country's success is, uh, relate, is a result of trade-led development supported by exports in textiles, sugar, and tourism. In recent years, Mauritius has been able to attract for indirect investment and uh, has moved on to the services sector and it has an advantage of having a skilled labor force and good infrastructure. If you look at the human development uh, index, you will note that uh, when we talk about employment in the export oriented uh, enterprise, you will note that the contribution of women has been very significant and the export-oriented sector is predominantly dependent on the female workforce. And uh, if we look at the current economic and political situation, we find that Mauritius has benefited from what we call political stability and diversification. And this has made of it a country that is doing fairly well in the region what we can pride ourselves of is that we have a successful democracy and the country enjoys years of constitutional order. 
our major asset remains our people and the equality of opportunities provided by the state. If we move on to gender statistic now, we find that women outnumber men and they live on an average seven years longer than men. Mauritius ranked 66 out of 142 countries in the enrollment in secondary and tertiary education, according to the Global Gender Gap Report of the World Economic Forum. It has a ranked 106 compared to the 98th position in the previous year, according to the same Global Gender Gap Index. And the Global Gender Gap Index measures gender equality across four key areas economic participation and opportunity, educational attainment, health and survival, and political empowerment. If we come now to the education sector, we find that both boys and girls participate in mandatory schooling from the age of five to 16. Gender parity index in the primary is one, in the secondary sector, 1.1, and it is in favor of the girls. We have achieved gender parity in terms of enrollment. If we look at the pre-primary sector, we note that we have, since 2012, reached gender parity in enrollment. If we move on now to the primary sector, we have achieved almost 100% enrollment rate in the primary sector. And we note that there is gender parity one in the primary sector. <coughs> the secondary sector shows the difference coming in. The difference in enrollment to be, is perceived to be more in favor of girls. Girls outnumber the boys in the secondary sector. And this is a point at which the underperformance of boys starts getting more and more pronounced. I will now take the pre-vocational sector. What we call the pre-vocational sector in Mauritius is the sector where students that are considered to be lower achievers tend to move on to. And the pre-vocational stream, here also we find that girls tend to outnumber boys. This is due to the fact that the dropout and non-retention is more pronounced for the boys than for the girls. We shall later come and try to figure out why this is the case. At national level, the learning achievement reveals persistent gender gap in performance in favor of girls across the age groups and across subject areas. This slide shows the, the evolution of a cohort of students. Let's see the students passing their HSC in year 2014. There were the students who passed their primary school living certificate in year 2007. Now, the gender gap as it moved on from primary to secondary was around 13.5%. But when they reach their high school certificate, the gender gap is reduced to 9.1%. And it is true for all the other cohorts. If I take the one, the HSC 2012 cohort, the gender gap passes from 12.4 to 8.7. So what we notice is that the gap between boys and girls at the earliest stage, CPE stage, is wide enough to warrant concern. However, as both advance into upper levels of learning, the gap, albeit very much present, tends to narrow. Now, the question that arises is, could this reflect the fact that girls attain maturity levels earlier and hence are more conscious of the needs to be more uh, steady in their studies and hence accounts for the improved performance. Or, but then we also note that boys gradually pick up. They don't make the full distance, no doubt, 
but do narrow the differential range of the gap. Now, this trend is confirmed by assessment studies carried out. If we start with the SQUAMEC, the Southern and Eastern Africa Consortium for Monitoring Educational Quality, the girls are seen to achieve higher levels of competence than boys in reading, but not, not so significant differences in mathematics. The next study carried out in uh, 2009 revealed the same results. Now, when we come to the, program, to the PASEC, Programme d'Analyse des Systèmes Educatifs de la Confirmen, at grade two, girls had higher scores in all three subjects tested, English, French, and maths, while at grade five, <coughs> girls had higher scores in French. We come to the PISA test now in 2009. Gender difference in both reading and scientific literacy was found to favor girls, but they showed no difference with the boys in mathematical literacy. Tertiary enrollment. Again, girls tend to outnumber boys in the tertiary subsector. However, we will note that there is a difference in the fields in which the girls outnumber the boys. Now, we find that girls tend to opt for education, health sciences, languages, humanities, even science, but the IT and engineering sectors are favored by boys, and there is a marked difference. Now, if we go deeper in the tertiary subsector and try to find out the different fields of study, the different, sorry, levels of study. If you look at the chart, it gives the enrollment ratio by gender for different levels of tertiary education in the public tertiary education institutions. And you'll find that the certificate level, you have many more boys opting for the certificate level, but as we move on, you'll find that number of girls for diploma, degrees,